TCI is brought to you by Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile contender Wicked Strong, the multiple grade one winning millionaire by Hardspun, who will retire new to Spendthrift for 2016. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Breeders' Cup. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Well, Joel, today we're going to talk about turf racing. We're going to release three new TCI top fives. Yep. You know, we said last week, the cool thing about the Breeders' Cup being right here in our own backyard is we're going to be able to see these horses. We're going to get, you know, a good first impression of them. You've been over there quite a bit already. Tell me, are there any standouts that you've seen so far? You know, I, I'm not so much focused on workout times. You know, unlike the Triple Crown Trail, we have all these young horses, John. They're really developing. You know, none of them have been a mile and a quarter, say, before the Derby. I mean, you, you can learn a lot from the workouts and the times and how the works are put together. These older horses, in particular, most of these divisions are older horse races. They're established horses. I mean, you just want to see them, you know, happy, uh, looking good in the flesh, carrying the weight properly after a long year's campaign. Certainly you want to see how they travel and handle that racetrack. That's all very important. So I've been really trying to pay attention to that. You know, Keeneland doesn't have lights. Yeah. So it's not until 7.30 to you actually see horses. So you miss everything before that. And then most of the workers are after the break at 8.30. So I had the uh, opportunity to see some of those, particularly the last couple mornings and final Breeders' Cup workouts. And, and we'll take that into this weekend and, and try to watch horses like Beholder who should have a much anticipated final workout after all she's been through this weekend. Very anxious to see her, but I've liked what I've seen from Beholder, yep. you know, particularly after what she's gone through. Back on the track at Keeneland, like what she looks like physically, nothing deters me physically from her, and I anticipate she's going to breeze this weekend. I anticipate she will remain on schedule for the Classic. Monday's a pivotal day for her because Monday's the day that they can decide, hey, you know what, let's back off a little bit and try the distaff. We know, we know even if she's not on her A game there, she can win the distaff. If they decide to proceed towards the Classic, that lets me know that she's on her A-plus game. The fever was a non-factor. It was a short-term issue. So pay very close attention to Beholder in the next few days, particularly leading up to Monday. In terms of horses that look good, John, I mean, boy, Todd Pletcher has a contingent that, you know, several horses that, to me, have looked good. A horse like Red Rifle, a czar, two-year-old uh, 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 Colt pointed towards the, the juvenile turf. Um, yeah, I thought Rachel's Valentina looked good this mm. morning. I mean, her workmate, that was a totally botched workout. But even before she even worked, to me, physically, she looks good. She's a lighter May filly. They obviously bypassed the final prep, so you had to be concerned about that. But, you know, I had Songbird all over that division, and, and maybe I still will. But now, based on what I see from Rachel's Valentina, I know Todd's done a good job of building her back up and sit, have, has her sitting on a big performance, in my opinion, to really be a viable contender in that juvenile filly. So impressed with what I've seen with her. Um, other horses that come to mind? You know, I, I can tell you this. I really haven't seen anything that's really deterred me from any right. horses that I've liked right now. Wesley Ward's had a couple horses. Undrafted looks good physically. Green Mask, I think. You know, two turf sprinters, I think, that made impressions on me based on their physical looks. And, you know, I can probably go on. But really, the most important thing is I haven't really seen anything that's deterred me yet from any horses. And I anticipate even seeing more of these horses when they come in, especially Europeans clearing quarantine and all that. Next week will be a big test for me physically. Because again, these workouts aren't as important to me. It's all what they look like in the flesh and how they're handling the racetrack. Yeah, you talk about Todd's. I mean, look, we've followed Todd all over the place doing this show. And I mean, he's just that type of trainer. When his horses come out, you know, every time a set comes out, they always look good. He's he just does yeah. a phenomenal Liam's job. Liam's map, that's another one. But, yeah. I mean, is that a shock that Liam's map looks great right. physically? I mean, what he did the other day was nothing but a maintenance move. Everybody knows he's going to be odds on at a dirt mile. But to me, he looked tremendous. I loved how a horse with his cruising speed was, you know, they broke him off with a pony from the pole. But, I mean, he didn't get it on. I mean, he was, he was very much at his rider's command was able to slow and, and cruise and, and do everything in rhythm at his rider's command, not show any sign of the aggressiveness, yeah. aggressiveness at all. To me, he is on top of his game right now and poised for a big race, but I think everybody knew that. So again, I haven't really seen any negative signs yet to take me off of a horse. And you know, you'd mentioned Beholder. We had the benefit. We were there the other day when, when uh, Richard Mandela came to the office and you know, they said that the filly's doing good. Gave her some time, let her do a lot of grazing, just be a horse, came out I think she's doing well. I anticipate they're pointing for the classic. Yeah, let's switch now and let's talk about turf racing. And Joel, we say this every year, man, I sound like a broken record, but really the Europeans really do yep. dominate these divisions. And reason being is they breed for it. This is what they shoot for, you know? 
So you start off, you see the first TCI top five here in the Philly and Mare turf. And man, I see a lot of European horses on there. Well, there's eight Euros nominated. And I mean, of course, that's where it starts. I mean, I, look, I take pride in American racing, but that's their discipline over there, the grass, John. And it's proven in history. They win these races and they're just better on the grass. So look at TC Mill, nice three-year-old Philly, cool more connections, multiple group one winner. Handles that, you know, 10 furlong distance, mile and 3 sixteenths uh, comparable distance in form. Got to have her number one. They have another 3 0 Philly found that they're going to run against the Colts in a mile and a half mm. in the turf. That lets me know they're strong in both divisions. I like her. She'll be your favorite in the race. Miss France, a four year old Philly, Andre Favre, another group one winner. She's been running more around a mile, but that extra 360 of a mile is not a stretch for her. She's been this far before. She's bred to handle it. Again, another group one Philly that's in top form. I think she'll be very tough in this race. Her class is much better than the Americans. Stephanie's Kitten, she's our best hope. Yep. Loves this distance, has been the top. You know, Philly and Mare Turf Horse probably for the last few years. You know, I, I mean, Long obviously, time. she didn't win it last year. You had a Philly get loose on the lead, an American horse that, that wound up winning the race. But I think on a fair turf course with plenty of pace, you know, certainly would set up her kick. She's the best American contender. But Secret Gesture kind of lets you know about the Europeans' class. She's more of a Group 2 horse over in Europe, John. They bring her over for the, for the Beverly D. She finishes ahead, doesn't win. You know, she veers out Stephanie's yep. kitten, and we know the DQ situation. But Secret Gesture belongs on this race, or on this uh, top five, because again, she has shown her class around left-hand turns in America, but she's nowhere near these three fillies in terms of class. Group one winner, group one winner, group one winner. They're proven. This filly here is another one for a 3 filly for Freddie Head. Not in really good form in her last two races, but if they're bringing her over, that tells me she's dangerous. And again, another filly with group one class. So to me, those five tower above the rest of the field. All right, well, let's move now to the mile. And Joel, again, you see some Europeans in here. You mentioned Freddie Head. It always reminds me of the filly that he had that, that won the mile, you know, I think back-to-back -back years. But I look on here, you know, again, I don't think I see, I guess Grand Arch is our, is our only hope in there for the Americans. I mean, if you want to call it a hope. I mean, I, he loves Keeneland so much, and he's in career form that, you know, I would love to see him run well in here. I put him in the top five, but again, you get eight Europeans in here. I mean, you look at a filly like Impassable, who's not even on this top five. She's a European, won her last three races, including Group One, where she beat Colts. And I've got Grand Arch over her, but I mean, I just let you know how deep the Europeans run, yeah. particularly in this mile division. John Esoteric, five-year-old mare from Andre Farb to me. Both the Andre Farb horses belong at the top of this list. The three-year-old Colt Make Believe, also trained by Andre Farb. They have not run against each other uh, this season. Both great milers, both multiple Group 1 winners in top form. I think Make Believe may be a little better on a softer ground turf course. He's a forwardly placed horse. I could see him on the lead or just stalking right behind the pace, particularly if obviously or some of those, those real speed horses you know, commit to the mile. He should be in that second flight. Esoteric comes from way back, launches her bid, but she's in career form right now, John. You know, you figure she fits in this race, particularly with all the pace that's signed up. Uh, time test is another one. Uh, another three-year-old, John, uh, coming over. Very good form to me, has that classic European mileage profile, belongs as a top contender in this race for Judd Mont. Caraconte, we already know he can do it. Yeah. You know, th th this will tell you all you need to know. Europeans, I mentioned there's eight that could run in this year's field. Last year, Caraconte comes over. He's one of a handful of them. He doesn't have quite as good of a prep coming in. He has a bad race where he had traffic trouble. He's 30 to 1. He wins the race with a 110 buyer speed figure over Anadin, who was second. I mean, it just lets you know everything you need to know about how good their milers are over there. So, Caraconte, again, his form to me is trending in the right direction. I could see him running well because we know he likes the, Europe, the uh, North American style of racing. And I mentioned Grand Arch. I'm just going to leave him in the five spot. But to me, that's the class year race. All right, well, let's move on then to the turf. And, you know, I see I, you got two Americans in here with Big Blue Kitten. I also see Red Rifle. You know, Red Rifle is one of those horses that's really come on. He's, he's turned into a very consistent horse. I see you got him in the number five spot. You know, this race has proven to be dangerous for ARC winners. I mean, not a lot of ARC winners have come over. A lot of them have come over with big reputations, but that's a taxing race. They all point for, you know, it's always only a few-week turnaround between having to run in that race, ship across back to North America. 
you know, it's softer ground there in, yep. in France. Doesn't matter if it's, they say it's firm, it's still longer soft. It's a different kind of turf course here. So Golden Horn will be a lot of singles on a lot of tickets in here off of his year in form. Certainly he's heads and shoulders over this group, but history shows us he's not ascension here. Big Blue Kitten has his pace setter running in the race, so it's going to assure a fast pace. That's what he wants. He's going to run into that. He's in great form, loves a mile and a half. I'm actually give him a little bit of a chance in here. Found is that 3 0 Philly for Coolmore that yep. we mentioned, John. To me, those are the top two European hitters in here. Uh, really postponed since he canceled and is not going to come over. Those are the two heavy hitters from Europe. Big time connections, big time form there. Slummer, I, I've liked what Chad Brown's done with him since he's ha added blinkers this year. And then Red Rifle, I mean, you mentioned him. I mean, another good work, you know, this morning at Keeneland. To me, he's sitting back on a top performance. May have bounced a little bit off that race against Flintshire, which was very good at Saratoga. May have bounced in his last start. Now he looks like he's trending back to a top performance and certainly should like the turf course better here at Keeneland than what he got last time. All right, well, thank you, Joel. I know it's a lot of work, you know, reaching over into Europe and, and researching all this. We really appreciate it. Yep. I look forward to seeing the horses next week, too. Oh, man. Make sure you guys come back. We're going to reveal a few more TCI top fives and we'll give you some more first impressions on these Breeders' Cup contenders. Thank <laughs> you.